good evening to all now i want to present my paper an identity crisis in chitra banerji devagarni's queen of dreams my presentation paper focuses on the search for identity with various sections like self identity search for home and nostalgic experience identity crisis on search for identity has received an impact in the post colonial literature indian english fiction deals at length with the problems raising due to multiculturalism and inter intercultural interactions man is known as a social animal who needs some a home love of parents and friends and relatives but when he is homeless he loses the sense of belongingness and the suffers from a sense of insecurity or identity crisis identity is the most appealing power of the dispossessed societies in an established institution in the current scenario everyone wants to move to western countries for a better perspective those immigrants lost their sense of belonging and they search for their identity and finally land up in hybrid identity they are in the state of in between us only very few of the immigrants are successful in adapting the new culture indian writing in english is the product of two worlds the indian and western world uh, a recurring theme in many of the novels of the women writers of recent years in explore, exploration of women's identity the study of herself many of the indian women novelists depict the desire and the dream of the indian woman in western country indian women writers like anita desai varadi mukherji ruth kaur jambal Chitra Banerjee Devagarni exposed the cultural suffering cultural suffering by Indian women in western countries identity is one of the most common theme in so themes in uh, south asian literature and in many cases the search for self identity is portrayed as confusing confusing painful and only occasionally rewarding women writing in south asian writer with a sense of attempting to make their voices heard over a cacophony of uh, long standing stereotypes and expectations diasporic women writing has different characteristics women of diaspora instead almost always without writing has different characteristic women of diaspora instead almost always without expect, uh, exception testify to a sense of dual and multi, multiple identities the modern diasporic indian writers can be grouped in two distinct classes one class comprises those who have spent a part of their life in india and have carried their baggage of their native land offshore the other class comprises those who have been brief since childhood from outside india they have heard a view of their country only from the outside as an exotic exotic place of their origin the writers of the former group have a little little <coughs> displacement whereas those belonging to the later group find themselves rootless both the groups of writers have produced an inviable corpus of english literature an indian immigrant to the united states of america chitra banerjee devagarni tries to come out from stereotypes and uses her past experiences and the desire to communicate the plight of indian women in america as a driving force behind her writing her writings constitute an attempt to reconnect her emotionally and physically to her immigrant status she has explored the force of tradition of her native country as well as the challenges faced by the immigrants in her adopted country devagarni turns to her inner consciousness to develop a new narrative which highlights not only the oppressive force exerted over 
Oman in both their native and not native cultures, but how trans uh, transposed the traditions survive and mutate on foreign soil. Chitra Banerjee Devagarni is a prolific Oman writer of South Asian diaspora living in America. The diasporic issues of identity, homelessness, alienation, struggle of assimilation, separation, racial issues are realistic deals in her fictional works. She is not only a novelist but also a poet. The main theme of her poetry is about the experience of the immigrant. She shows her own immigrant experience in her writing. She uses the fictional autobiography as the form of writing and her writing raises an interest in reading and moves the readers emotionally. Readers also share his or her experience of immigration in the fiction. She voices for her problems of immigrants through her writing. She also refers the change of food, language, dress and culture. The Chitra Banach Divagarni's character in, the, in her novels reflects the paradox of being caught between two cultures, the Indian and American. She has made her own break their silence and articul articulate for freedom and strive to acquire a free identity and also develop female bonding among them. She also insists on the fact that women should face their problems boldly and have a self-identity in their lives. Her novels are the celebration of the strength of women, not her weakness. They are detached from their native homeland for various reasons through they physically assert, mentally retain their nostalgia for homeland. Her uh, protagonists make new adjustments in their new surroundings and for this, they uh, reinvent themselves. They are physical distance from their home and their encounters with the new ways of life are conferring, <clears throat> conferring upon them a kind of double vision which enables them to look both objectively and nostalgically at their own culture and the aligned culture into which they seek to integrate. In this novel, Queen of Dreams, Devagarni depicts the Indian American experience of struggle with the two identities of cultures. She attempts to bridge the gulf between the American born daughter and an Indian immigrant mother. Mother is uh, gifted with the ability to interpret dreams. The daughter yearns to understand her mother's behaviors and her work. Rahi, an American-born Asian struggles to identify herself. She does not know when, where, and how to relate and belong. Mrs. Gupta, a first-generation Indian immigrant in America, is a queen of dreams. She says a dream is a telegram uh, from the hidden world. She returns much of her Indian roots. She never wanted to get married, but according to the society, she could not live without a man. So she got married to Mr. Dubda. She rejected the traditional wedding ceremony and legally blessed him. To let the dreams involve her, she forbid her body in search of physical pleasure. She says, my life is nothing but a dream. Later, they moved to United States where all her power leaves her. She loses her identity and gets into depression. She realizes that to have her dreams, she needs to uh, stop sharing her bed with her husband for a dream. Sellers cannot uh, squander their night as ordinary woman do. She interprets other people's dreams and warns them about the uh, imminent danger and problem, I dream the dreams of people, other people. Mrs. Gupta dresses an ancient either, uh, either a sari or salwar gummies. She usually restricts herself with the confinement of her, of her house and only ventures out to pass the message of her dreams to her clients. She also maintains her culture by mostly uh, cooking uh, Indian food. Ragi, 
the Rashi says, at home we are really eat anything by Indian. She neither fully uh, assimilates nor fully denies the culture of the ho host land, just adapts the life around her without transforming or changing herself completely. She creates an identity for herself which uh, revolves around her uh, dream world which none does enter. Uh, not even her husband or daughter, like he, a young artist and divorced mother living in California in an American by birth and grows up with the feeling of belonging to her land for birth, a land that seemed to me be shaded her unending misery. Uh, she runs a tea shop named the Chai House to earn a living and to provide her six years old daughter Jonah. Rahi observes the Indian clients coming to her cave and notices their dresses. Okay, Suja, can you please uh, conclude? Okay, ma'am. Already it's time. People are waiting for the next session in the same conference room. Can you please conclude? Okay, ma'am. At the end of the novel, uh, Rahi moves uh, towards success and stability in life. The terrorist attack forces Raiki into the necessary changes to get her life back on track. She attempts to uh, acculturate to the aligned country. She forgives and re 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 rekindles her love for her husband and family. She grows as a confident individual and emerges as a strong person. She loves India but had adapted to American life. Chitra Banerjee Devagarni explores the problems faced by Indian as an immigrant who tries to adapt to the American lifestyle, which forces them into complexity, trauma, and sense of loss. She also portrays the possibility of establishing bicultural identities in Draki in spite of Mrs. Buddha avoid in transmitting her Indian culture. Okay, thank you, Suja. It was really a good presentation. And shall I ask you one thing? It's not related to your presentation. Or did you join very late? Ma'am, um, already I went uh, in another room, ma'am. There yeah, they... okay, okay. okay. So by mistake, you were, you joined in other rooms, or uh, another conference room, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, so okay, 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 okay. Yeah. To room two, so I went to, uh, Okay, the thing was, we were waiting for you uh, uh, till, uh, actually, uh, other two presenters, they finished uh, uh, earlier. You people, uh, you and Vignesh Kumar uh, did not join. That's the reason I asked this question, and sorry for that. Uh, thank you, Suja. Thank you so much. Uh, it was Thank really you. a good presentation. Thank you. Vignesh Thank Kumar, you. are you here? Have you joined? Vignesh Kumar? If he has not joined it, we shall uh, end up the session because uh, the next technical uh, session is uh, about to start. Vignesh Kumar, once again, have you joined? Are you here? Okay, I think he's not here. Uh, thank you, dear participants and all the presenters. Uh, thank you very much on behalf of Holy Cross College, Nagar Koil and Cape Comorin Trust. Thank you so much. And the next session will start at uh, 6 o'clock. Technical session 12. Thank you so much.
good evening we will begin the next technical session this is technical session 12 and the presenters are sulu sendla tan shukla munga tanya shabu and dr d david wilson and the final one is priya So listen, Lama, are you there? Yes, I am here. Okay. You shall begin. So we'll begin okay. the first presenter. So listen, Lama, can you start? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Thank yeah. you. Ma'am, introduce yourself and start presenting. Okay, ma'am. Uh, I'm trying to share my screen, but uh, it's not showing. It's visible, ma'am. Is it visible? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. <laughs> Is my PPT visible? Yeah, it's visible, ma'am. But the, yeah, I could see your screen. Okay, is my PPT visible, ma'am? No, ma'am, the slides are not visible. I could see your screen. Yeah, now it's visible, ma'am. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, hello, good evening to all present here. Uh, my name is Zulu Sinla, a PhD research scholar at Nagaland University Department of uh, English. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the International Virtual Conference on Cultural Studies. And the title of my uh, paper presentation is uh, Indigenous Beliefs and Practices of the Our Tribe of uh, Nagaland. Uh, Nagaland is uh, located in the northeastern part of India, uh, sharing its borders with Assam, Manipur, and uh, Myanmar. Uh, there are altogether 16 administrative uh, districts, which is inhabited by uh, 17 major tribes, along with many other uh, sub-tribes. Um, and uh, the particular tribe on which I'm going to present my paper tonight is the Our Tribe. The Our Tribe is one of the uh, major tribes of uh, uh, Nagaland. Uh, giving a overview of the geographical and historical background of um, the district, particular district inhabited by this tribe, Aos, uh, uh, it, it's good to know that, uh, you know, it is bordered by Assam in the north, then Woka, another uh, district in the west, uh, Twensang, another district of Nagaland in the east, and Zenboto in the uh, south. Uh, there are nine sub-districts with uh, Ongbangong being the uh, smallest uh, uh, districts of, uh, of this, uh, uh, of, of Mokchung. Uh, Mokchung is also the center for trade and commerce, especially for the Ao people, uh, because uh, this is the place uh, which is at the heart of the uh, different villages of this particular uh, tribe. The climatic condition is very temperate and uh, it consists of six uh, ranges. Now, an introduction to the Our Tribe of Nagaland. Uh, this tribe is one of the major tribes among the tribes of uh, Nagaland. Uh, 17 tribes are there. And uh, the origin of the owls uh, goes back to the folklore uh, in which uh, the owls believe that they emerged from long throat, which means uh, six stones. 
These long drop or six stones we are believed to be three males and three females situated at this village called Tunglimdi village. Now, after emerging from the six stones, they settled at Tunglimdi and uh, married one another according to the clan division. So the Ao ancestors lived, uh, uh, according to the oral uh, narration, the Ao ancestors lived at Tunglimdi for many generations. And when the population increased, they migrated and occupied the different hills of the region, which comes under the six ranges at present. Looking at the orality of the owls, uh, studies have shown that uh, the orality of the owls uh, plays a very vital and integral part uh, of the uh, tribe. Uh, before any written documents were uh, uh, taken, uh, it was uh, transmitted by word of mouth, which even today is kept up in many villages and so this transmission of uh, the oral tradition by word of mouth is uh, looked upon as the keeper of the tribe's history and identity. So the oral narrative uh, way was the only way of life in the uh, past before for the pre-literate uh, owls. All forms of logis were uh, passed on by word of mouth, therefore. Now, oral tradition is a very empowering form of narrative that connects the past and the present uh, for any uh, ethnic tribe, so also for the owls. So it played the role of disseminating history, knowledge, and wisdom from one generation uh, to the other. Uh, I quote from uh, J.B. Mills uh, in the book that he wrote, The Owl Nagas, in uh, 1926, uh, uh, to bury the bus is the tendency of the semi-educated generation, which is uh, growing up. Looking at the oral traditions among the Owl tribe, uh, it can be divided into uh, three major uh, uh, genres. One is myth that revolves around the origin and migration of a tribe, legend, uh, mainly to do with legendary stories of villages or groups of people about their feat or victory in wars, and uh, different types of folk tales. Uh, almost every Naga village has uh, their own set of folk, folk tales, some of which are common to each other, some are uh, particular to pertaining to particular uh, village. So a multitude of folk tales and uh, uh, are found uh, in the uh, in the different villages, and the elders in the village act as the storehouses of these uh, folk tales. Coming to the uh, main topic of the uh, paper, ceremonial uh, practices. Uh, there are different ceremonial practices in relation to uh, cultivation. These ceremonial practices uh, takes uh, place during the new cycle of uh, jhum cultivation. That is when a new uh, cultivation is, fresh cultivation is about to take place because uh, Nagaland is a he hilly uh, place and therefore jhum cultivation is the most appropriate type of uh, cultivation. And uh, in the olden days, the ancestors of the owls were uh, 99% uh, cultivators or uh, uh, agriculturists. Now the village elders praise to Supatiaba. Supatiaba at Sangram is the court, uh, is the god of fate or god of destiny. So the village elders pray to this uh, god of fate or destiny for the protection during the cultivation from wild animals, from accidents and evil spirits. And they also pray for a bountiful harvest. There are uh, the different types of ceremonies uh, in relation to cultivation are wood cutting ceremony, wood sanctification cer uh, ceremony, field bur uh, burning ceremony, sowing ceremony, seed uh, sprouting ceremony, harvesting uh, uh, ceremony. Now in these uh, uh, ceremonies, uh, the elders among the village cultivator uh, carries out the act act of the ceremonial sacrifice and worship. So he takes for the ceremony meat, rice, beer, and an egg. And standing at the middle, in the middle of the way to the field and facing towards the field for cultivation, the village elder prays to Subhadiyabha Tsangram or the God of Faith 
or destiny for the protection of the cultivators from all these uh, untoward uh, accidents. He also prays for, uh, uh, he not only prays for a bountiful harvest, but uh, for the protection of all the cultivators. And then he offers the cup of rice beer and asks the God to drink first as a sign of respect. Then he breaks the egg on a banana leaf and slowly let it trip steadily on the ground. Now, after the ceremonial worship is done, from the next day, the villagers would go to clear the field and get ready for the uh, cultivation. So this was the ceremonial practices that was practiced in the olden uh, days. Coming to the religious practices in relation to uh, the different objects of uh, nature. There is the worship ceremony of large pools, uh, which is called awatsum in the our dialect. Worship ceremony of kirulung. Kirulung means house uh, uh, burning stone. Then the worship ceremony of shitilung. Shitilung meaning elephant uh, stone. So um, these ceremonies are these uh, large pools or large rocks which are supposedly uh, which supposedly have some uh, supernatural powers are worshiped by the villagers when they come to know of the powerful spirits that um, guarding the pool or the powerful spirit that is in thought to be or believed to be in the uh, uh, rocks while some villagers worship every year uh, these objects of nature, there are some that worship only once in three years. And for this worship ceremony, only uh, fair pigs are offered for sacrifice, along with a healthy red uh, cock without any blemish, and also an egg is used in this uh, ceremony. When the water pools are worshipped, the elders of the a clan can initiate the uh, ceremony. And uh, this is how uh, the one who carries out the ceremony of the worship after the worship will quarantine for uh, three day days as a sign of uh, cleansing. Now, this is the image of Shitilong, 11 stone. Uh, this is uh, one of the greatest uh, um, gods that is worshipped by uh, the, this, the people of Mungsiemti uh, village. Now, coming to the uh, beliefs of the owls, uh, spirits. Uh, when it comes to spirits, Aung uh, Lamladze is one of the most commonly uh, 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 believed uh, to have uh, uh, been in existence during our ancestors' uh, days. So there is this myth that revolves around Aung Lamladze. Aung Lamladze is also known as the one who walked with her face uh, her feet facing backwards and laughs in wilderness. So this Aung Ladze is uh, is a, a integral character in the folklore of the owls, and uh, it is also called a jungle ghost. Now, uh, J. B. Mills, uh, one of the earliest anthropologists who wrote on the owl nagas, describes it as a dwarf creature with long hair reaching to the ground, which goes about uh, chuckling. Late uh, uh, Tamsila Ao, in her book, The Ao Naga Oral Tradition, describes it as any meeting with such creature is considered to be a bad omen. Talilula Lungchar, also in her work, writes about Aung Lam Latze as a pre-made or supernatural entity, myth or fact, malevolent or benevolent. Uh, these uh, contesting narratives have only fueled the belief in Aung Lam La. So this is the myth revolving Aung Lam La Tze. There is also the belief in lycanthropy. Uh, the, uh, the beliefs in the existence of spirits play an important role in the oral tradition of the owls. So uh, there are uh, the owls commonly believe that they dwell away from human inhibition in thick, dark forests, caves, waterfall, mountains, which are designated as their uh, abode. And uh, while it is believed that the malevolent spirits cause diseases, illnesses, deaths, and work against the well being of human beings, the benevolent spirits enter into close friendship with humans to the extent of marrying uh, them. So another kind of supernatural impersonal spirit is the spirit leopard or spirit uh, tiger. 
So the uh, belief about the uh, tiger spirit is the, the phenomenon of transformation uh, from one form to the other. Sorry, there is a, a mistake there. So the phenomenon of transformation from one form to the other form was a pos possibility with the primitive uh, owls. And uh, when we look at the writings of uh, the earlier anthropologists, we find records in the census of India, Assam, in the writings of Hutton and J.B. Mills, where they have mentioned uh, uh, recorded incidences that has been uh, narrated firsthand by uh, people who uh, are believed to possess uh, uh, this tiger spirit. So those that can transform into the nature of animals and exhibit sub, uh, certain supernatural uh, powers uh, 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 existed in the uh, uh, ancestors' time. So uh, the man communicates with his tiger through a language that only they can understand. So uh, there is this uh, mysterious physical relationship of the tiger and the tiger uh, man. In the sense, if the tiger gets injured while hunting, the tiger man also gets a wound in the same uh, spot, even if he is just uh, at home. And whatever the tiger hunts and eats also satisfies the hunger of the uh, tiger man. Now coming to the belief uh, system. Uh, even today, there is this place co uh, called uh, Tangam Maro, uh, the cup, which means uh, the cup of Tangam. So uh, the picture shows the, you know, the shape of the uh, uh, cup. Now, this is a fresh water spring supposed to possess mythical healing uh, power. And the oral narrative behind this says that a person by the name Tankam felt very thirsty on his way to his field. His thirst was quenched by the fresh water that he found on the way and he left his cups on the stones. And those were the days it is believed uh, when the stones were soft. So therefore the shape of the cup is visible even to this uh, day. Now the elders of this uh, particular village, Lungkam, asks for this water to drink on their dying uh, bed because there is this strong belief that it gives healing power to the humans. Another one is the life of the death beliefs. When a person dies, the owls believe that his soul is taken to Asiyam, which means land of death. The sighting of an eagle hovering above the compound of the diseased is a sign of the completion of the soul's transition. And it is believed that after the eagle hovers uh, over the compound of the disease, it goes to Mungzuki, which means eagle's house. And this Mungzuki is again located at Longkham village, as the picture uh, shows. Now, uh, the other belief system is in the beliefs of the different uh, Tsangrams, different Tsangrams, which means different uh, gods. So according to the uh, traditional belief system, the owls believed in many, believed and worshipped many gods, but among all those uh, gods, there are three, there are three gods that were commonly believed in. So uh, Lijaba, is the first one, second one, Longdi Tsangba, and the third one is Miu Tsangba. The uh, Lijaba, the god Lijaba is known to be the creator of the earth. The god Longdi Tsangba is uh, known as the lord of the sky or heavens, and the god Miu Tsangba is uh, known as the lord of the land of uh, death. So the three Tsangrams, uh, namely Lijaba, Longdi Tsangba, and Mi Tsangba, were uh, worshipped by all the owls of all the villages. Abomination of uh, these, any one of these tsangrams or gods would often lead to unfortunate circumstances of the person. So the act of ceremony carried out to these gods is in the form of uh, offering a fowl, offering a pig, cooked rice and rice beer and laying them at the altar. Only the chief priest um, of the village 
can perform the ceremony. And after the offering is done, the priest calls upon the blessings of the uh, gods on the uh, people. So the culture of appeasing and worshipping the gods have been followed by the Aus for a very long period of uh, time and have become a cultural norm which was practiced in their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, life. After the ceremony, the priests and the villagers also observe Jenna. And going against the observation of Jenna might incur the wrath of the uh, gods. In conclusion, there is a combination of the real and fantasy in the beliefs and practices of the owls. Uh, that which was real for them at that time uh, sounds unreal and supernatural uh, to uh, uh, people at this uh, time. So the transformation of the real into the awesome and unreal also is found in many of these uh, beliefs and practices. And that what is strange and unreal was a common a common place of the preliterate owls, that is the ancestors. So ordinary events are sharply etched in realism and dreamlike elements. And in the folklore of the owls, the invisible forces like dreams, legends, myth and history finds a place in the absurd, unexplainable aspects of magical realism. Thank you so much. Now the session is open for the audience. The participants can write their queries. You know, questions? Solution? Solution, love? Yes, ma'am. Solution, I have a question on... Um, is there any factors that influence the rise of Naga nationalism for the first time or our tribe of Nagaland for the first time? Is there any factors that influence their rise? Uh, once again, I uh, your voice is cracking, ma'am. Can you please repeat the question again? Okay. Am I audible now? Yes, yes. Ma'am, is there any factors that influence the rise of Naga nationalism or our tribe of Nagaland for the first time? The Naga nationalism is to do with all the tribes, there are 17 major tribes and there are a number of sub-tribes. So uh, when it comes to Naga nationalism, it does not uh, pertain only to one particular tribe. It is a combination of all the tribes uh, together uh, fighting, uh, for, uh, fighting for a separate uh, country. So uh, if we have to uh, go back into history, uh, it involves a lot of history and uh, political uh, you know, agendas and aspirations of the people behind the nationalist uh, uh, movement. And I, for one person, is somebody who doesn't give much interest uh, today. So I might not be able to give you a valid answer, but uh, going by the, what is written in the books that we have come across, uh, definitely we find that our, you know, the, the, the initiators of uh, this nationalist movement, uh, they did have a valid reason uh, for uh, this movement. That's how, that's only how much I can answer. Okay, ma'am. And one more. Okay. Can you mention some works that put more light on our tribe? Uh, some works that would? Yeah, some works related to this owl tribe. Okay, so um, uh, Dr. Timsila Ao, uh, who recently passed away, late Dr. Timsila Ao, she has written a lot of uh, books uh, on the uh, Naga. So one of the book that is um, uh, treated by and um, used by many scholars, Naga scholars as the 
you know, uh, Bible of uh, their research studies is the uh, Aonaga, uh, the uh, Aonaga tribe. So that is one book which I have already uh, mentioned. And uh, uh, there is also the works of uh, Mr. Talidamjan Imchen, who has also written a lot of, uh, uh, who, whose work reflects a lot on the uh, our folklore. Uh, Dali Damjin is also another very reliable uh, author of the uh, Aonagas. Okay, thank you. That is an, a quite elaborate presentation and very nice. Uh, really, thank you. I was really, really astonished with the elaborate things that you have mentioned, everything about our tribe of Nagaland, the ceremonial practices, religious practices, and the technical terms related to our tribe and in everything. Very nice, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's... Okay, let's move on with the next presenter. Tansi Glam Munkang, ma'am. Tansi Glam. Tansi Glam Munkang. Ma'am, PhD scholar, NEHU. East Kasi Skill Hills, Shillong, Meghalaya, India. Dancing Lamukun, ma'am. Are you there? I thought she's not there. Okay, let's move on to the next presenter. Tanya Shabu and Tanya Shabu, ma'am, and Dr. D. David Wilson, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, over to you. Ma yeah, Am you I can, audible? Yeah, you are audible. Introduce yourself and start present. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. So myself, I'm Tanya Sabu, a PhD research scholar from Karunia Institute of Technology and Science, Coimbatore, under the guidance of Dr. David Wilson. So the topic of my presentation today is racial attitudes and gender disparities in Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's Americana. I would like to start my presentation with a quote by Audrey Lord, a very popular American writer, I'm a black feminist. I mean, I recognize that my power as well as my primary oppressions come as a result of my blackness as well as my womanness. And therefore, my struggle on both of these friends are inseparable. The author, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, is one of the most successful and internationally rewarded African authors of the 21st century. In most of her works, Archie discusses what it means to be a woman today and what is envisioned for us as beings. She expands her boundaries into portraying the relationship among Blacks in different parts of the world. Racism and discrimination have existed from the dawn of humans and continued to this day in the 21st century. The Black Lives Matter movement, which originated in the US very recently, quickly spread across the globe, making it more vital than ever. People were completely outraged to learn that racial bias still ingrains in our society. So the work I've chosen here is Americana, and this work was published in the year 2013. This paper investigates the race and gender aspects of the novel. So Americana remains as an autobiography of the author herself. Just like the female protagonist of the novel, Ifa Malu, Adichie herself was born and brought up in Nigeria and later moved to the US for her higher studies. In a very recent interview of Jester Daily, the author has remarked that, I wasn't black until I came to America. I became black in America. So this is the central theme of the novel. Americana is inspired by the experience that Adichie faced when she came to the United States. The book reminds us of the misinterpretation of women and biased portrayals of black women. So Americana may be read slowly as 
a love story between Ifamalu and Obinse, and the difficulties they encounter in the native country Nigeria, which forced them to move to America and England to fulfill their aspirations. The novel recounts their sufferings in America and England due to racial and gender discrimination. Their experience as immigrants in Western society has completely affected their characters and changed their perspectives. So they decided to go back to their hometown, Nigeria. So my article here focuses on Ifamalu, that is the female protagonist of Americana. Her character is a very powerful one with different prospects and objectives in life, affected and influenced by her race and gender. So Americana is basically about this girl called Ifamalu, who grows up in Nigeria and later moves to the US for her higher studies. Despite her wonderful academic success, she is forced to grapple with what it means to be black for the first time. However, in the long time, she blends into the American society. Ifamalu gains tremendous success and later becomes a famous blogger about race in America, entitled Race Teens or Various Observations of American Blacks, and goes through several romantic relationships which affect her personality and shape her identity. So she spends over 13 years in America before returning back to her hometown, Nigeria. Adichie describes the different treatments and opportunities based on the person's love life, luck, and perspective in this novel. So my paper aims to explicate the black feminist perspectives as it appears in the novel. So feminism, as you all might know, is a movement that advocates the equality of both sexes, while black feminism includes race, gender, and class as the key factors that contribute to the experience faced by black women. The tradition of black feminism stems from being both black and a woman. A long history of action led to the emergence of black feminism. It focuses on how racism and sexism intersect to create the social issues and inequalities that black women face. It emphasizes on how closely interrelated sexism, racism, and class oppressions are. Black women faced a variety of difficulties, including convincing the white woman to share power with them and demonstrating to other black women that feminism was not a white woman's movement. It draws attention to and actively addresses the numerous facets of racial injustice and gender inequality. By reading this book through a black feminist lens, we have no choice but to see the struggles faced by black people, especially black women in different parts of the world. Americana skillfully depicts the challenges and marginalization and discrimination a black lady encounters in a globalized world. Ifamalu, the character created by Adichie, represents the difficult path of a woman of color. Privileging men over women has become normal and even accepted in our societies around us. Being male, the male counterparts of uh, Ifamalu have been granted power and privilege more than Ifamalu. The book is filled with social commentary on race and gender and how it impacts black immigrants' lives, particularly those of female immigrants. It also examines the inevitable interconnectedness that exists between race and gender, a communion that unjustly surrogates black women to the lowest position in the society. Through the exploration of Americana, one can distinguish a two-way relation between two categories of race and gender as necessary ingredients that contribute to the shaping of a black woman's identity. From the beginning of the novel, the reader encounters several situations where the protagonist is exposed to various kinds of discrimination, such as gender, ethnicity, racial group, and cultural background. The significance of these diverse layers is profoundly harmful and unjust to black women as they are dragged to the bottom of the social ladder. Ifamalo's experience here is a self-discovery and reshaping of her own identity. She proves that race and gender still lingers in today's world. Thank you.
Okay, now the session is open for audience. Participants can raise your hands. No one. Hey, Tanya, ma'am. It's a nice yes, presentation. That's a, a nice presentation. And then uh, I have a query, but before that, the work Americana, the idea of black diaspora play, play out in Americana. It's a great literary piece. So Americana laid bare many examples of entrenched racism in modern day America. Did any of those examples surprise you? Uh, Ma'am, yes, see, uh, racism still lingers in our society and Americana that work shows us that because right from the first chapter, the um, racial injustice FMLO encounters because she doesn't get a job for, more, for almost a year, more than a year, just because of her race and her ethnicity. So yes, I think that still lingers in our society today and she makes it very clear. Yeah. Good, but one suggestion uh, what yes. is out this like to have added more uh, uh, lines from the no book Americana and the uh, names of the characters, the character list. Okay, also, yeah, there are so many uh, women roles in the novel, the book Americana. Yes. Yes, the, most of the works by Tumamata and Goshi Adeshi have gender disparities, racial attitudes, and most of the works of her deals with women and their problems. I uh, guess, ma'am. What my suggestion is uh, that was a nice presentation with uh, an elaborate ideas and, and your thoughts too. Okay, okay, ma'am, got it. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Sir. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Okay, like, let's move on to the next presenter. Ms. Madam, Madam, excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Sorry to disturb you. Uh, yesterday I have missed my session. Can I present in this last session? Will you give me opportunity? Yeah, you can present. Hello. Please yourself. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Myself, yeah. Dr. B. Shanmuga Priya from Sairam Engineering College. Okay, and yeah, Tanya, please okay uh, it it shall go by the order i will present at last ma'am okay, okay let's go on with ms priya uh, yes, yes ma'am ma okay, ma i present ma okay ms priya yes yeah, ma'am yeah go okay ma'am good evening everyone my name is priya i am phd research scholar in the department of english banaras hindu university the topic of my presentation is exploration of terrorism and trauma in the light of select Indian English novels. So terrorism has emerged as the greatest menace to the international community. It has led to the increasing vi violation of human rights with devastating consequences. It was the attack on the World Trade Center in September 2001 that served to push it to the center of the world politics. No part of the world is free from the problem of terrorism. The predicament of a troubled age has been rightly captured by Salman Rushdie in his novel Shalimar the Clown when he says, everything is unsettled, everything is connected. The story of anywhere is also the story of everywhere else. Hence, India is no exception. It has a variety of terrorist problems coming from political, religious and ethnic strifes. Still, it is difficult to limit this term within a fixed definition as its nature keeps on changing. The definition given by Federal Bureau of Investigation has gained the consensus and it is 
terrorism is the unlawful use of force of violence against persons or property to intimidate or coerce a government the civilian population or any segment thereof in furtherance of political or social objectives it can be either domestic or international depending upon the origin base and objectives of the terrorist groups terrorism as a subject has been gravely discussed in media politics popular culture as well as in non fictions but in literary fiction the debate of terrorism has gradually evolved in the past two decades the novels based on terrorism were often assumed as sensational or thriller written for commercial purpose but in contemporary novels which are being written on this subject have space for reflective discourse it can be considered as significant cultural markers which have been dealing creatively with the global issue of terrorism situating it within race region religion power politics and gender as well so the present study attempts to deal with the different facets of terrorism and its consequences in the novels like just another jihadi jain by tabish khair published in 2016 the association of small bombs by karan mahajan published in 2016 and the collaborator by mirza wahid published in 2011 so terror has been often considered as a male dominated space yet in the recent decades be it voluntarily or coercively the role of female as suicide bombers and recruiters has increased at an alarming rate jihadi the jihadi jain by tabish khair presents a vivid picture of militant brides operating around the world and the terrifying cost of their religious fanaticism it deals with the process of radicalization of two girls named jamila and amina from england through the help of internet they got acquainted with a preacher named hejie a woman working in the support of the men fighting in the name of jihad jihad is an arabic word which means striving or struggling in recent decades it has gained additional attention through its use by various insurgent extremists and terrorist organizations so these two girls jamila and amina left their families and country behind they run to join the islamic state in syria to serve a cause they ideologically believe in amina belonged to a rich family her father was a banker and mother was a working woman it shows that the turning towards her turning towards jihad or becoming a perpetrator of terror was her personal choice rather than any kind of economic compulsion for terrorist ideology plays an important role as it provides the moral and political vision that inspires their violence shapes the way in which they see the world and defines how they judge the actions of people and institutions hejie used to indoctrinate the girls by quoting lines from the religious texts which she manipulates in order to justify their acts of self sacrifice and suicide it shows that when terrorism becomes holy the social psychological and political aspects of terrorism takes the form of sacred expression in the minds of the terrorist hejie the women used to fabricate narratives of heroes like hercules who had indomitable indomitable will and on his death jesus the king of gods placed him in the heaven as a constellation such stories proved handy for the purpose of glorification and serves as a model for terrorists to justify their cause when amina gave her consent to be a suicide bomber hejie gifted her her rosary beads and said take this to heaven with you o blessed one it reflects that terrorists have created a divine mandate where the deity is perceived as being directly involved in the determination of ends and means so fundamentalism of such kind makes an individual fanatic in their religious convictions and also smothers their sense of rationality further a terrorist attack not only results in the physical injuries but also causes psychological trauma which can alter the way of living of an individual or a community altogether this can be evident in the novel the association of small bombs by karan mahajan which is set in delhi and deals with khurana family when the two boys of khurana family tushar and nakul khurana pick up their family's television set at a repair shop one day in 1996 disaster strikes without warning a small bomb detonates in the delhi market place killing the brothers instantly to the devastation of their parents the memory of the boys keeps on haunting their parents because the father used to torture himself by thinking that why me was i hitler in my past life did i massacre a million people and forget was i stalin general dyer or ashoka before his conversion so it can be seen that how he suffered terribly 
though it was a minor bomb blast according to the reports but the whole world of a family was shattered their lives never remained the same so reactions to terror to have revealed a complexity which demands a deep analysis rather than facile decoding to oversimplify the notion of trauma and homogenize the experiences of victims can be problematic mirza wahid the collaborator reflects multiple aspects of trauma suffered by victims because of terrorist as well as the state apparatus in the novel the deteriorated state of kashmir is reflected in the plight of women which cues towards the collective trauma of women community in kashmir when the men make their way across the line of control in the pursuit of jihad it is women who have to bear the brunt of all the questioning and investigation sometimes they are raped by indian soldiers as well as by the terrorist theodore adorno opines perennial suffering has as much right to expression as tortured man has to scream but in the novel it can be clearly noticed that the narrator's mother was neither allowed to express her agonies with her fellow victims nor she was being able to scream after witnessing the crumbling state of kashmir her pain can be captured in the line maybe that's what ma also wants to leave to run away to escape her prison of loneliness she hasn't seen another woman for more than a year now so in addition to this the novel itself has become a creative outlet to evoke personal trauma of the author who is trying to communicate and translate the pain inflicted by terrorists to the reader he has tried to come up with his own suffering which has further becomes or echoes the voice of his entire community and that is evident in the line we too are part of it so it shows that trauma and terrorism are inseparable to each other in the same way terrorism and violation of human rights because the violation of human rights and trauma both are the consequences of terrorism coming towards the conclusion of my paper i would like to say that despite the handling of serious issues with depth and subtlety novels based on this uh, subject have not gained a remarkable place in the mainstream literature the role of literature is important in order to gain comprehensive understanding of terrorism and that that has been highlighted by nivedita majumdar in her work the other side of terror when she says and i quote literature by personalizing the political and politicizing the personal illuminates terrorism in ways that cannot be achieved through any other vehicle and without which our grasp of terrorism remains incomplete hence it is important to talk on such issues thank you so much Thank you, Ms. Priya, for a nice presentation. And another question: Thank you, Is there any uh, solution, or any give any solution for the trauma, trauma people undergoing with these characters, um, thinking in their melancholy, melancholy life? Uh. Sorry, ma'am. Can you please repeat your question once again? Your voice is breaking. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Can you give, uh, ma'am? Can you give any solution for these characters as they are undergoing um, a very critical situation, as their um, psychological condition is not good? as well as they are undergoing traumatic situations so do you have any solutions for them uh, ma'am i human characters yes ma'am ma'am i read this book it's called jihad jihadi jane in this book there are two girls uh, that is amina and jamila and uh, this book shows the process of their radicalization that how they adopt this uh, radical attitude in religion like religious fanaticism but what happens when they go to that place to uh, to raise the cause that they said so at that place they realize that for what they came to that place like for to follow their faith because in england they were not allowed whenever they dress properly like complete what was their dress so people used to make fun of them so they think that they used to think that this is not their world they need to go to some other place and when through internet when they look at hege's uh, proposal that how people used to live there in most religious way most disciplined way so they 
they assume that this can be the world which they were craving for and they go goes uh, they both go there and then what happens that when they go there they face the another trauma because their women were con condi conditioned to live in a particular manner they don't have to uh, show their face they don't have to talk to men they don't have to go out so this bring another trauma for them so uh, uh, this is what uh, i have tried to show uh, yeah okay. Okay. thank you nice your answers too thank you ma'am apart from shanmugu priya ma'am one presenter to is also left yes ma'am that yes ma'am shall i present ma'am yeah one second ma'am one second okay yeah is there tanshikla ma'am is there tanshikla munkang ma'am The topic is world narratives in an ever-evolving globalized world. A critical study of Mumairin Bhatto thinks the world matra. Is she there? Tansigla? Tansigla ma? She is not there. Okay. Shanmugu Priya ma'am, you can. Yes, yes ma'am. I'll share my screen and I'll present ma'am. Okay. Okay. Is the screen visible, ma'am? Yeah, it's visible. Okay. Oh, just a minute, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. My topic is uh, rising for love, independence, and its reflection in Kate Chopin's *The Awakening*, uh, a comparative perspective with the famous Tamil movie *Vidhi*. So, uh, so it's like a comparative study. Uh, I have taken, uh, I have shown my abstract for uh, your reference. I have taken a uh, Kate Chopin's *Awakening* and uh, the famous Tamil movie *Vidhi* for my study. That is rising means searching for love and independence and its reflection. so in the novel and uh, the movie with how it is shown so now also youngsters uh, uh, they decide their life on their own and they want they feel that they want to be independent and what actions as its result that is what is the consequences uh, so i just want to show that in my novel i am not against that they are actually wrong but they don't know to decide what is the real world actually so in the novel awakening uh, the author explores uh, k chopin explores a uh, woman's desire to live fully within her true self actually uh, the hero in edna it is a story of edna ponteller who tries to get pleasure outside the world instead of her cultural roles of wife and mother and fulfillment of her sexual sexual desire and independence so like this novel in the tamil movie vidhi Uh, which was released in 18th january 1984 directed by k vijayan so starring with uh, purnima bakiraj and mohan and sujatha in prominent roles so in the uh, novel awakening uh, the the main character that is the protagonist edna ponteller she wants sorry. to sorry yes ma'am sorry to interrupt actually yes, your screen is visible but your pre presentation is not visible presentation is not uh, visible or uh, audible is yes, ma not visible ma you are audible you are audible yes i am audible okay visible is it visible. is it visible now ma'am yeah it's visible now okay 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 thank you ma'am okay uh, so she actually the um, protagonist edna ponteller Uh, marries in her teenage, so 
in in our teenage we doesn't know about ourselves just we get to know about ourselves in that age she married and the author tells this as a reason so the main point is that in our teenage uh, loving one person and uh, marrying is not at all okay for our life and uh, in same in the movie vidhi also uh, that is mohan raja's character is portrayed as a playboy who never understood what is love so he belongs to a rich family and uh, he tries a lot to win the love of radha and uh, actually his motive is not love and uh, my research article deals with the novel awakening and the movie vidhi focusing the rifling for love and pleasure without considering the culture and the society okay our culture what is our culture and uh, so they don't care for it it is shown evidently through the characters of edna pontelar and raja so in the court uh, by saying um, her marriage to leon pontela was purely an accident in this respect resembling many other marriages which masqueraded as the decrees of fate it was in the midst of her secret great passion that she met him she fell in love as men are in the habit of doing and pressed his suit with an earnestness and order which left nothing to be desired so she tells herself she d- just met him she fell in love and she married him but uh, even after marriage she the de- she does not love him just it's like a infatuation what we get at the first moment so the novel awakening has been banned for a long time after its publication so many critics has uh, uh, told that the story is like a poisonous poisonous one and it affects the culture of a normal people but k chopin really wants to awaken the people by his novel that uh, how a girl should be how a, g- a girl should be aware of her uh, role so critics may say that the novel is about sexual pleasure of a woman in my perspective it is a story of a woman's life and certainly it is not a common story which everyone can understand without understanding the full purpose of the novel so after becoming the mother of the two children uh, she is aged 28 she realizes herself she gets awakening by a man robert whom she discovers that she loves the the amazing thing is that that robert whom she loves realizes the fact that she is a married woman understanding the situation abruptly leaves her and goes to mexico so this is the disappointment she gets in her life as uh, she sorry for the interruption ma'am uh, realizing the fact that she is a married woman and he disappears uh, from her but uh, but this makes her uh, disappoint for the second time she is not happy with her marriage life and again she is got she gets disappear sorry disappointment from robert so this made elna to enter upon a fl- violent flirtation with another one person of new orleans the reason is that she got married in her teenage as we discussed earlier she did not have an idea of love in that teenage period and no maturity to decide to decide about her marriage life so edna pontier ponteller says that a woman can either be defined by men or live a life separate from the rest of society women can either becomes become wives and mothers or exiles she is a mother woman uh, she defines woman woman can be like a, becoming a mother or wife woman has no independence she was moved by a uh, she was moved by a kind of commiseration for uh, character madam rashnagol so she tries to advise her that uh, she would realize her uh, true self and she she should concentrate on her family but uh, she uh, rea- she replies to that person madam i would give my money i would give my life for my children but i would not give myself i can't make it more clear it's only something i can
sorry madam i get some interruption sorry sorry ma'am in line also so she says that uh, she couldn't explain more than that this quote obviously shows her uh, search for independence and love that is she is ready to share anything but not herself fully and uh, that is uh, she uh, that person madam fails to understand edna search for independence likewise in vidhi movie also um which rightly depicts uh, how a person should not live in this society a human should not live in first we we have seen about the the protagonist raja now we are speaking about uh, the heroine radha which is uh, casted as purnima bhagyaraj so a woman should not love an unknown person even though if she loves a person she must be careful with her limits while spending her time with him a girl is not supposed to meet a boy privately before her marriage only after losing herself she understand the real intention of raja like edna pontre in the novel awakening radha with the help of the lawyer she gets she she goes to court and accuses raja and proves that he is the father of the baby so even after that she does not want to uh, marry radha so the novel awakening and the movie are like a kind of cultural awakening to the world both the man man and woman should respect to the culture without spoiling anyone's life edna gets sympathy from the audience as she has married her husband leon spontella without love and she did not get it from him essentially in the movie also radha did not taste the essence of true love instead fooled by raja's false love so their search for love and independence has made them to choose their own end of their life so it indirectly reflects upon the cultural issues the woman should be very careful in her every step of her life following the traditional way otherwise it may end drastically without purpose and satisfaction which the novelist kate chopin and the remarkable director k vijayan have portrayed in their appealing work successfully thank you ma'am okay yeah, thank you shanmuga priya ma'am that is a nice presentation and so you have uh, compared both the uh, novel and a uh, film i think uh, yes ma'am okay it's a friend's book and uh, a film named movie named bd right so yes ma'am ma compare uh, the leading character of that movie uh, bd yes, that of the character named Eden Portier from your book, Kate Chopin's book. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's not of it's not Pontellier. Yeah, can you come for now Pontellier with the uh, leading character of the movie with me? Yes, ma'am. Catchers into their uh, uh, sunken with their own world with lot of struggles. Yes, ma'am. Actually, I comp I have compared two characters with the character of Edna Paltin. The main character is uh, the hero Raja. So, without understanding the concept of love, he proposes to the heroine. Her name is Radha. So, yeah. And uh, Edna also did not understand her family and love with her husband. She did not concentrate on her family life and love. She wants uh, her own satisfaction. Yeah, so this is okay okay can you bring out the uh, uniqueness of the character of presentation is there any individuality or uniqueness between the roles punim of bachuraj and edna pontelier yes uh, ma'am but not exactly uniqueness but uh, a similar way uh, radha here is actually she doesn't want to go in a wrong way punima bakiraj did not go want to go in a wrong way but she unfortunately she chooses the wrong path here edna pontile uh, uh, she knows that she is conscious of what she is doing she says in the court that she is important to herself she cannot sacrifice herself so wantanni she is do, do edna edna pontile edna pontile's action is a, uh, is a voluntary action so she, what she does in her life and she okay. finally commits suicide when her awakening comes she finally commits suicide but here radha does not turn to choose the wrong path but unfortunately she chooses a wrong path 
so finally the i want to tell that uh, yeah, we should have, we should be aware of our limits that's a nice moral message and uh, uh, especially girls should be aware of our limits yes yeah. oh, there are so many limitations for girls it seems for nowadays yeah is there a limitation or turning into clutches or constraints that it is a burden with so many things yes ma'am uh, actually i uh, this famous movie after this famous movie also there are many incidents occurring in our world so we cannot deny the fact but i want to just uh, give a recap about that movie what has happened after at least so whatever we know or we are not really following it We, though we know it we are not following it so it should be a recap what happened in the film is every girl should watch it so how a married woman should how a married woman should behave uh, we can see in that novel she is the mother of the two children and uh, she did not realize the fact and she goes for own uh, for the she searches for the satisfaction of her own self yeah, there is some nice something Um, uh, actually, it's a it is a comparison between a modern uh, woman and an ancient woman. It seems I think that uh, Edna Pontellier's life is entirely different from uh, the movie portrayal character Unima Barkiraja. She is undergoing ancient stereotypes uh, life, but uh, we can do some transition in that with the, comparing with the present. Uh, women characters as they are uh, position or in the leading fields oh yeah okay ma'am okay yeah, thank you so much ma'am thank you so much thank for you, your question okay uh, thank you. so uh, yeah, excuse me ma'am i want to tell that uh, just uh, as i have no i have not uh, presented in the allotted session can you note my name ma'am yeah i have noted your name Yes, ma'am. Doctor B. Shanmuga Priya, Assistant Professor of English from Sai Ram Engineering College, Chennai. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yesterday I was filled up with uh, tight work. That's why I couldn't uh, turn up with my presentation. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thanks so much.